Okay, the next uh, 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 welcome, uh, Dr. Shankar sir has uh, told you why this uh, session was improved because again, you all would have already seen SMA in your clinic. We were also uh, seeing SMS, SMA, no, sir, SMA on our knee no? But we knew that it is a muscular dystrophy because genetic testing, one of it, it has to be perfected. Even when I was doing post-graduation, it was the type 1, 2, and 3 we used to pick up clinically as SMA. Type 3, later type 3 and 4, we could not pick up as SMA. But we knew that they had proximal weakness and we used to uh, give. So most of you who have experienced for a long time would definitely have seen some child with SMA. Now, because the world has changed, the Latin investigation was now, genetic testing has come and SMA has to be identified. But one thing that you have to understand is uh, the urban people in this world is only few. Almost 80 percent of the people are not going to have, uh, even if all these uh, labs come, are not going to get facilities. I think we are one of the few lucky patients. Education kitty alkar no kya thene world population le katara 10 percent or 15 percent le orlo. Rest of them have not got. Of the educated people ana namala we have reached a professional level we are. So you know that so many people are not able to do genetic testing and all those things. But this is important why? Because we can still give some good services to the uh, children with SMA who can be made to have a better quality of life. So that is where our role comes. We hope you understood. Uh, we have a greater role than if you think all the labs are working. Like COVID test is either India the total population. You would know that only maybe 50 percent would have had a uh, uh, earbud poked into your nose. All of you have tested. But if you look at the total population of India, so that gap is still there. But they will also still come to us, especially since we are working in the government. So, uh, and drug treatment, what is the progress, what is not the progress, to give good rehab and to continue their quality of life is the purpose of this class. So I will be speaking on rehabilitation of mobility and the activities of daily living in spinal muscular atrophy. So this is an overview already uh, Shankar sir has uh, taken the class on it, uh, type 1, 2, 3 and 4. Type 0 is also there, but that is when in the child is in the, uh, in the womb and they may or may not survive. So uh, there was a consensus statement for standard of care for SMA in 2005, which I think is a British uh, one, that the five care areas for are diagnostic and intervention, pulmonary care, uh, gastrointestinal and nutrition, orthopedic and rehabilitation, and palliative care. And our uh, role is rehabilitation. The consensus statement after uh, SMA genetics of testing but before 2005, there were not many people could be done genetic testing. So they, then the treatment has evolved. The overall uh, treatment evolves also. So uh, the 2017 standard of care for SMA came as nine areas of care. That is diagnosis, rehabilitation, orthopedic, nutritional, pulmonary, acute care, medications, immunization. And then they also knew that emergency care was also affected for uh, this change out. Not that they are not affected. The way you deal with a normal person and a uh, child with SMA is different for emergency care also. And other organ involvement and even ethical consideration. That is uh, whether uh, drugs should be given to all the children or what drugs should be given to what. All this is involved in ethics because new drugs are coming. Should you test uh, the drugs on any population? So that is a major issue in, yes, it's not as much of as an issue for orthopedics because already it has developed a like, practice of a deal, treaty empathy, already implant fixation and all has been there. So those things are not there. But now with newer drugs have come, 
So ethics is also issue. So these are dealt with for SMA. And I think uh, ethics, uh, drug administration, all will be managed in the pediatric and the neuro department. So this uh, consensus guideline was uh, uh, proposed by SMA UK, SMA Europe, Muscular Dystrophy UK, and Treat and NMD is uh, another organization. In 2017, they got together and brought a patient guide. Patient guide, no, remember? Our co booklet. And that contains all these 11 areas, which are just chapters. And they are genetics, physiotherapy and rehabilitation, orthopedic management, nutrition, growth and bone, breathing, other organs, medication, emergency care, anesthetics. So, because the children have lung issue and the muscles are not recovering. In anesthesia, what is happening is you give a drug and then shut off the uh, voluntary muscles. So, the other muscles will work and then you can do the surgery and pain is also shut off. So, anesthesia, and you all know about it, anesthesia is like flying an aeroplane. You don't uh, bring them to total coma, but uh, you have to bring them to a point where they where their consciousness goes away and they don't remember all these things. And then only so in SMA, sometimes recovery from the muscle because the muscle would have gone, respiration may not take place. So those are also important aspects of uh, SMA uh, when you're managing SMA. So that is anesthetics and administration of new drug ethics. And again, now a new thing has a choices. Whether they want to do a uh, drug, whether they want to continue with the rehab, whether they don't want all this at all. So it's our, uh, sometimes people say we do, just don't want it, but it is our duty to explain to them that this will be useful, but not force a treatment on the patient. And drug delivery is more dangerous because you have to take consent that we don't want and all other major drugs, but uh, otherwise it's not necessary. Okay. So Arnold in 2015 has said that Weakness and impaired mobility is the central feature of SMA, and this predisposes numerous musculoskeletal conditions. Already, I think you all know it, but I'll be uh, uh, telling it again. So early recognition and appropriate management is helpful in maintaining function, preventing deterioration in vital capacity, and improving life. Again, pediatrics will come back to vital, vital capacity because lung is one of the major issues, and if they fall into a respiratory infection, yes, our parents are told about that. So that will again go. So that's why they have given importance to certain aspects of life. Okay. So this requires a multidisciplinary approach and is best suited to implement efficient and effective treatment. And the dream approach should aim to understand the patient's functional level and limitation. That is important. We may not be able to cure them. The drug in him, but it's making a small change. Uh, then, at a functional level, Anna, we give more importance to. So, all our therapies, all our exercises, all our treatments should be directed from the functional level point of view, so that they have a better quality of life. When is impairment, improve quality of life, offer independent mobility as much as possible, and offer better activities of daily living. Next. Uh, the rehabilitation team consists of the physiatrist, the pediatric neurologist, or pediatrician, orthopedics if there are scoliosis and uh, boning issue, pulmonologist if the lung is uh, involved significantly, physiotherapist uh, and, and occupational therapist, that is for exercises and occupational, you all know that, uh, and for activities of daily living, they may require spinal braces and we need orthotis and a rehab nurse for. Uh, taking care of the patient, like preventing pressure sores and other things. Developmental therapist, because the child who starts at one year will be developing. Normal child also also will develop. SMA child will also develop. So how we can enhance their development so that their function is better? Well, you have all managed CP. Well, you know development is an important thing. So that is development. Speech therapist is for uh, swallowing. And uh, uh, CP, we have more of af aphasia and dysphasia and dysarthria. But in uh, SMA, we don't have as much of dysarthria, but they have problems with swallowing. One is due to the neck posture. <coughs> and the 
other is sometimes rarely you can have a little bit of bulbar involvement. Then counselor to pacify them because uh, I think now they think that because of the media, uh, they think that uh, drug is going, some, some parents think that the drug is going to make a absolute difference. So we have to counsel them on the role of medicine, role of exercises, role of uh, care, role of education. So that's why a counselor and a special education teacher uh, may be necessary because in the school that child may not may take more time to write so that way. it's not like a cp in cp is slightly different in sma you need the child is uh, uh, relatively intelligent but they may need support then the the child the parent family and the community and i have bolded it because because they are the ones who actually decide what is to be done it's only in the last uh, 10 years we have all these uh, things coming in or maybe last 50 years before that humans were there in this world uh, all animals were there in this world so now we have a science to uh, the science was still there previously also now we are learning the science to implement it so that is why it is the patient the caregiver and the family who is and the community so in uh, USA it is different one system of management though the principles are same the system of management is same. in Australia it is different in uh, Europe it is different and in UK it is different so management even in CP you have seen like that in uh, one uh, institute it is different in another institute it's not uh, exactly like uh, like we manage uh, uh, fever so COVID one I love relatively it's standard more standardized whereas in CP it's all different well, the same diplegia in one place you we manage different though the principles are same but the if you look from outside it is uh, to the parent it is different that is why the functional levels in SMA you should still know non sitter sitter standard and walker next is in non ambulatory patients contractors are common and regular non painful stretching uh, exercises and uh, bracing program help to maintain flexibility and prevent complication. So Wang I think was also involved in the uh, consensus or he has uh, taken the consensus and you know, he was in uh, written articles on it. So that is why uh, uh, it has come. It's also come from the consensus. Next. For independent mobility in sitters and non-sitters, manual or powered wheelchair may be useful. Patients who are able to bear weight on their legs and have trunk control, a standing frame, a mobile stander, or walker with orthos like a HKFO, KFO, AFO may be considered. Uh, why I am again, uh, it will come, same thing will come again and again because that is what we can offer for them. Okay, next. And physical therapy can help maximize endurance, prevent contractures, improve mobility, and safety also because if we keep the muscles going good for walkers and standers, their chance of fall is also less. So that is why exercising and uh, may preventing contractures is important. Next. Occupational therapy plays a vital role in maximizing activities of daily. The functional use of hand like uh, writing, positioning and all those things help the child continue education and participation in school and to take part in, in play. So play is very important because all children will like to play, even we like to play. But uh, only thing we are now act as adults, so we have to sit and read books or but we get a chance to dance, so we will do that. Next, okay. So modification of the environment and home should be considered to allow safe accessibility and optimize independence. Next, scoliosis is a major musculoskeletal issue that impacts the patient with intermediate forms of disease and is almost universally present in non-ambulatory. Non-ambulatory kana is scoliosis set of kurdalite kana that is the type 2 and 3. Okay, next. Weakness will lead to contracture and spinal deformities which predisposes to pain and osteopenia. Because they are not walking, because the bones are not uh, being uh, pressed, there uh, you can have osteopenia. So if we take an x-ray of my x-ray and you take the x-ray of a manual laborer, the cortical thickness of his bone will be far more than the cortical thickness of my bone 
ബിക്കോസ് വൈ ഐ ഡു നോട്ട് ഹാവ് സ്ട്രെസ് ഇല്ല വെയിറ്റ് എടുക്കുന്നില്ല അതുകൊണ്ടാണ് നമ്മൾ സോ ഫോർ എ സജഷൻ ഓൾസോ ഇഫ് യു ഹാവ് ചിൽഡ്രൻ മേക്ക് ദം പ്ലേ മേക്ക് ദം ഏതാ ക്ലൈം ട്രീസ് ഓൺലി തിങ് ഇഫ് യു ഡോൺ മേക്ക് ദം ഫോൾ ദെൻ ദേ ദേർ ബോൺസ് വിൽ ബി ഫാർ സ്ട്രോങ്ങർ ദാൻ അവർ ബോൺസ് So, how many of you would have climbed trees? All of us, Ilya. That's a, that's a big issue now. <laughs> Because the urban people would not have climbed in relative terms. But uh, rural people would have climbed. So, that actually makes a difference. In CP, this, in, uh, in children with, even for Parkinsonism, all this actually affects. I'm not sure that Ilya Pullari is not going to be able to do it. the intention is they should have activity in outdoors they should have act, uh, balance walking running so that they will have a long term better quality of better uh, strength you know west le in australia and us uh, children are let, let outside avare ella ellaru odu ellaru cycle outu ellarum eda neendam po so their general physique is now much better previously when they used to have all the burger and pizza they were all fat and thing but they have learned now they are sending all their children to schools le ellam play bhayangara add on cheyunu so that will actually help and dic uh, uh, you can help a lot hmm, we can get the cp children more stronger than the other children if you allow them to play but you have to be careful and not allow them to fall and injure them so control those who can walk and Uh, fatigue is a very important thing because it is a survival motor neuron protein is not there smn genes illa survival survival motor neuron protein is not a- adequately formed so what the, the motor neuron is not surviving in the long term so pandu 10 motor neuron undanengile 10 varsham kayumbothe adu koranju it can become less so what will happen is korchu movement cheythu kaniyengale then the patient starts will not fatigue it so how many of you seen sma children you have seen avaru the kai pokkan parayumbodhekke le nalana adipichu pokki kaniyumbodhekke pinne pinne pattulla nu parayum and they get nammada pullare padipikkunna pole ini njan eludulla le you have children le and they all are like that eh nalamatha page aayi kaniyumbodhekke njan ini eludulla so it's the same thing Well, no, for these children, it is not because of that. It is because the uh, muscle has become fatty. And one possible uh, reason is, even in our normal muscle, that is why the myofibrils fibers are working. Immediately, because it goes into the refractory period of the physiology, that fiber is allowed. The next set of muscle fibers I am actually taking over. When I am contracting like this, and doing the next contraction it may not be the same fiber that is contracting it is be the con- next muscle but i have 10000 or 1 uh, uh, lakh muscle fibers in my biceps alone so the, we have backup to do whereas in a sma that many fibers is not there for a backup so that is the reason why uh, that is probably one of the reason why we are having weakness so that is why fatigue occurs Uh, so in addition to uh, weakness, neuromuscular appears to contribute to functional limitations. When you test, you get grade 3, but when you ask them to do a thing, they are not able to do it. So, fatigue is added on. Power grade 3. That's why, if you have to do it, you have to do it. That fatigue is important. So, one of the major unmet needs, that is from the Eugene Mercury, did a uh, good uh, show to Jenna, ask the people, Uh, what is your problem the parents told that fatigue was the major problem so they did a study and one of the major unmet need in type 3 sma was to improve fatigue and fatigue was they measured using uh, fatigue fever scale okay next so uh, we evaluate musculoskeletal issues in this way. that is enumerate the contractures and deformities then define the level of amylase that is non sitter sitter uh, stander and walker in measuring the range of motion you know like arrow is measuring uh, maybe if you have lots of time you can measure all the joints but uh, it may not be possible always so at least the affected mo- joint you must check so that we know whether it is increasing or decreasing 
So grading power of upper limbs and lower limbs, you cannot grade all the muscles also, but you can uh, uh, grade some important muscles and then find out. Then uh, you can use a revised upper limb module and uh, classify. We are also starting to train SMA Urimiti Kanandodangeda is only recently, but we used to see one or two. So I think all this will again change to make it more effective and easy in classifying the ambulatory status of the patient in Hofer and Bullock where you say community ambulator, uh, household ambulator, um, uh, room ambulator or functional ambulator, then you are on uh, wheelchair but managing wheelchair independently, then someone is assisting on the wheelchair and then bedridden. So that is mainly used for adults, but uh, maybe we can apply it for them. Then functional independence mission, they are applying it on SMA and modified Barcel index. Then uh, measuring the capacity over that, the six minute walk test. Uh, that is, uh, in 2017, Para has found that they could pick up fatigue in type 3 using the six minute walk test. So they were all walking, but uh, they keep tested. They tested uh, checking six monthly uh, six minute walk test. After about uh, maybe one year or two years, they found that six minute walk test distance have reduced. And that is when they identified that uh, fatigue was the major issue and that is how the so six minute walk test is also good but uh, I think six minute walk test may not be always possible maybe you have to shift into uh, not uh, two minute walk in ala but the six minute walk in but so that we have to be only the good walkers you can measure with six minutes not everyone who walk can be measured by the six minutes okay then quantifying the functional ability to maneuver that is the touch test and time to get up and go test I think uh, you will all know about time to get in. That's all. These are all academic purposes, but it will help. Yes. So, x rays of the spine is useful to identify and measure scoliosis. The progression of scoliosis is measured using the Forbes angle and radiography of the hips to identify pelvic obliquely. And um, uh, we need to get the help of uh, uh, PMR or ortho people for identifying the uh, hip dislocation from radiography. So weakness is the main feature of SMA. Weakness is mainly like, uh, uh, may I know your name? Amaradilla. Huh? Amaradilla. Ah, Amaradilla. Ah. Uh, so we, uh, we uh, it's proximal and axial also. The shoulder, right? in Duchenne muscular dystrophy, usually the facial scapula will okay? shoulder on involved, right? but here the spinal muscles are also involved. It involves the shoulder, hips and spine to a major degree. The muscles fatigue easily. There is visible atrophy of the limbs in the more profound case. But uh, mostly most of them will have uh, an, uh, atrophy, but uh, some overeat and they become obese. And actually there is atrophy, but you think that uh, uh, it's not atrophy. But that is also there, but power will not be possible for those two. So that is where we can, we can make a mistake. But if you look at their hands, you can see that the uh, in between all the bones will be more visible and uh, this uh, uh, interesting muscles in the bulk of You will all know that, right? when you put it in the area, muscle in the bulk of the tone So that can be identified. Uh, lifting arm above shoulder. Moving legs and rollover are difficult in type 2 and there are later varieties of So, grading of muscles, you know, like MRC grading is used to uh, monitor the progression of weakness. Next. Before beginning institutional exercises for therapy on a child with it is essential to have an evaluation by a pediatric neurologist, pediatrician, psychiatrist, and the rehab team to identify the impairments and start out the rehab plan. 
why this is important in this process is because uh, the courts have to also ask the uh, health service or the, uh, or the coverage or the team to identify all the SMS in the state and then evaluate to them and then identify uh, who has to be given the drug. So that process is also there. Okay. Management of muscle weakness is uh, graded strengthening exercises. It's a graded strengthening exercise. It's not a big resistance. If some uh, workers may can, you can give a progressive resistance, but it is not the dumbbell uh, like we do for sports, but it may be less. I think uh, you will know better for what uh, uh, resistance to give for some. But it should be graded. That is a lower graded than when we use for sports. Positioning of the limbs for optimal muscle tendon length. This is actually important. Uh, optimal muscle tendon length. So suppose uh, you are having, uh, you are keeping the biceps in an overstretched position. In long term, the, muscle, the biceps will lose its, uh, its pulling power. It is still there, but it will lose its pulling power. Uh, the simple example that I always tell is, our socks in the elastic area. The muscle is there, the tendon is there, but if you overstretch also, that is the, so you have to keep it at the right position. Then low repetition and adequate rest in between exercises to reduce muscle fatigue. Well, you have seen that they can only do five and not more than that. So I think the, if we don't take you 25 or 35 also, they may not be able to do it. It's uh, the fatigue tension and sometimes damage to the muscle also could set in. So keep the repetition so then if the time tolerance you can add it. That, that, that is up to you. Uh, initially you should go slow, then you improve according to uh, need. So rest in, bet in between exercise sets, sets to reduce muscle fatigue. Uh, uh, well, we have learned that uh, in sports only if you do 100 repetition, the power will go up to the next level to really bring the power. But in here, you have, to, I think, we have to. Anja, 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 which you could come today, I know the advantage of it. Not 30, 30, 30. So that uh, timing has to be uh, identified. It's different for each child. So that has to be. Then uh, supportive orthosis to ma maintain muscle length. Uh, you don't have to give com an orthosis completely for all because they can have pressure, so they may not, style may not tolerate. Like in DIEC and in CP clinic also, then you are done, then you are done for all. It's very difficult for you. So, trying to get their compliance and uh, practical solution is necessary for orthotic application. Then assistive or dynamic splints to assist weak muscles, then careful judicious use of strengthening exercises helps to maintain the strength, helps to maintain the strength level of muscles in SMA for a longer time. So modalities this NMS has limited role in maintaining or improving muscle strength in SMA. Uh, so that was what we discussed. Uh, role may be small, but it may still be there. Uh, the, uh, yes, in sports people also. For example, in sports people, also they give ES after a patellar tendon injury because a quadricep shutdown can occur. Uh, in sports, uh, you are having a quadricep patellar fracture or a tendon uh, rupture, then you suture the thing and then you leave it. Even though the muscle is, has got adequate bulk, the quadricep just does not start. So you have to give a ES to start off to the contraction so that the brain understands to do. So then you continue with the exercise. So those roles may still be there. It's basically they said that you cannot improve power from 3 to 4 or 2 to 3 with exercise and because the whole body has got multiple muscles involved, it is not, uh, that is not the one uh, role in to improve. Okay, exercises, vigorous fatiguing, that is James Arthur and Kotke and Sinasi, that's a different uh, article, said that vigorous fatiguing, progressive resistance exercise in general appears to be contraindicated in most motor neuron diseases, especially the severe types of type 1, 2 and 
free and these can lead to overuse weakness. Uh, most sitters type uh, 2 and 3 have grade around 2 or 3 in their upper limbs. It varies, but this is just the biceps and triceps powers. Gravity eliminated strengthening or active assisted exercises would be the most useful for hip muscles, knee, shoulder and elbow and other joint uh, Next, uh, In exercises, uh, level etc. observe trends, that was what uh, uh, Dr. Lakshmi also said that uh, they did a study and found improved strength and motor function during progressive resisted exercises in children with type 2 or, and type 3 and another study using 12 weeks of cycle ergometry also found an increase of VO2 max but Bora found no association between physical function and molecular, molecular response in SMA2 using R ergometry. So, as I Progressive versus things like Kodukano, Vendeo, and all of the little controversy, but definitely, uh, so vigorous, fatiguing progressive exercise, it's important, fatiguing progressive exercise should not be done. Okay, progressive resistance is not for sport, you can give you a area way to code it, type okay, you, you can train them up. That is different for four and five. To maintain you can okay. Next. Uh, muscle tightness and contractors. Factors promoting contractors as a muscle that span two joints. That is a hamstring usually develop contractors. Biceps can also develop contractors. And abnormal posturing in non-functional position. Muscle weakness. Muscle injury due to overstretching or exercises. That's also possible. Uh, in uh, CP also. Sometimes uh, Muscle pain, one day, the child will not allow you to do exercise. So, that may be a small muscle injury, even Odin, we don't know because the child will not tell that I am having a muscle injury. They will just cry. I think you know that. So, that we have to identify. So, injury could also occur. Pictures who sit in chairs, wheel chairs for prolonged periods also develop hip and knee contractures. Uh, non sitters who continue to lie in flex adapted posture uh, also develop uh, adduct adduction contractor. Muscle weakness is with abnormal postures contribute to conduct. So, maintaining good posture is an important aspect of uh, common contractors in children with SMAR. What we have seen is shoulder adduction and subluxation, elbow flexion and pronation, then uh, risk ulnar deviation. Uh, this is just observed only, uh, uh, not from a study, but we have observed in SMA clinic. And finger and thumb adductions are common. Hip flexion adduction leading to dislocation. In severe floppy children, maximum external rotation with abduction could result in a frog leg. It's not just sometimes it's scissoring, sometimes it is. Rarely it is frog leg. I think, you have, have you seen frog leg over in a then you have a abducted. Uh, external rotator, the contractor also. But that's rare. Usually you have, uh, usually you have this, uh, adducted, adduction. <coughs> Knees in flexion because they sit on a wheelchair, sit on a chair for a long time and then they do mobile and uh, writing. But that is only what they can do also. They, uh, they cannot run around. So they would prefer <coughs> to do hand activity. Then ankle foot we have seen is equinus. Equino varus in sitters and calcaneo valgus in standard. That is, overstretched uh, tendo Achilles will uh, lead to calcaneo valgus type. But when you sit, you think that it is equine. So when you hold and uh, do only, then you know that it is actually uh, uh, lax angle joint. Okay. Next, uh, deformities of the spine, scoliosis, kyphosis and uh, poor neck control. Progression of uh, paraspinal weakness along with prolonged sitting contributes to increase in the spinal curve. Scoliosis is caused by more than 20 degree will require a spinal brace to support it and those above 50 degree may require surgical correction and stabilization. Paraspinal strengthening of the muscles on the convex side of the curve along with good posture can help slow the progression. Uh, paraspinal muscle strengthening, they have, now they don't 
recommend it, but that is probably because it's not uh, it's not correcting even for normal scoliosis. Uh, exercise strengthening alone is not uh, going to correct the scoliosis, but you can prolong or uh, you need muscles to keep it straight. So the convex side muscles can be strengthened. And then uh, graded non-fatiguing exercises to the neck and scapular muscles help to maintain good head control. Uh, may I know your name? Rashid. 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 Uh, you, know, you would have seen that they hold their neck very well in sitting. Mm -hmm. Suddenly, if it falls down, then they can't lift up. Sit does not. You know, any yeah, pinna boka. They, they, so they cannot lift up. So, so that is where we can actually strengthen and give some endurance so they will have a better quality of life. So, pinna boka matter. That's the whole weight. Pinna namalu poki kolka. So, if we can keep those muscles. Because the muscle is very thin, they may not have an adequate number of ma ma muscle fibers in it. Complaining of me. I don't know, we have to do it uh, in a very judicious way. That's <laughs> why you are right. The point where it changes is. I would injury again, then that muscle actually goes away. So then you can't actually lift it. So small muscles we have to be more careful. I think you, you can tell give those advices better. Uh, next, principles in management of contraction, evaluation of ROI move joints involves training caregiver on proper positioning. Upper limbs, uh, shoulders should be well supported on armless while sitting and elbows in 90 degree flexion while seated. Extended while life. So 90 degrees, if you pull seated you will have an elbow flexion contraction. So you have to change this in between. Wrist should be in neutral position, neither radially deviated nor ulnar work. Usually, you work ulnar deviation, but you have to have to position it. Lower limb should be in abduction, knee straight, and ankle in neutral position. Daily, regular, low, low repetition, gentle passive arm exercises by the caregiver can be. Uh, what I have noticed in the wards at night, when you come for night rounds, uh, the bystander will do Uttri uh, Speedy uh, But what happens is they are not experienced. Uh, suppose I am doing a suture, I may do it very fast. That doesn't mean a house surgeon can do it as fast as it. You must tell the uh, they see this fast exercises in therapy because you know the limit. Football is a very good thing. We are going to do this. We are going to do this. So, that, uh, uh, we have to tell the caregiver or the parent that uh, uh, don't uh, do it as fast as I am doing. Do it in a controlled way. And if you can educate them better, then it will be. Far better. Uh, so, sustain slow, non painful stretching of the tight muscles. Uh, hello, I hope you agree to that. Uh, orthotic application to maintain correction that has been achieved by uh, physiotherapy. What happens is we do exercises, get all the ranges uh, right. After one month, they can come back again with a contractor because they are not wearing the orthosis or they are not maintaining. So gen getting orthotis to custom make splints that are lightweight and easy to apply. In CP also, we do surgery, we bring the ankles to neutral, the knees to neutral, we get good adduction. Uh, they go home, they, they, uh, uh, they don't wear the orthosis and then after about one year, they can come back again with equinus contact. So it is important that what we achieve should be maintained. So management, if the contractors are not amenable to exercise for splinting, the child may be referred to the orthopedist or physiatrist for necessary serial correct casting or surgery as required. Serial casting, SMLE, we don't do much because uh, the muscles are too weak and the bone is slow. And they, uh, rarely we add, but in CP we do because there is an adequate amount of muscle bulk. So serial casting is a repeated application of plaster of Paris for the affected joints in possible. <coughs> Corrected position to reduce a contractor, following which exercises and 
splinting or orthosis have to be continued. So the testing alone is not going to correct the contract. You have to add all exercise to lambda 1. So cylinder cast for the knee, below knee cast, above knee cast, elbow and wrist hand cast, used for resistant contract. Caution is watch for pressure source, decreased vascularity and remove if complications occur. So surgery for the limbs in SMA is muscle fractional lengthening, that is for the tight muscle. You don't usually do all this for SMA, it's just uh, like uh, we said for ES, this is very judiciously used. If that uh, contractor needs to be corrected to improve a posture only, and it's a judicious use. So surgery for the limb is limited due to risks of anesthesia in respiratory compromised children, and the recurrence of the deformity is high, and there is very little muscle birth to support the joint. It is usually undertaken if the contractor leads to severe pain or significant function. Pain one is pain, but that is a judicial uh, uh, decision. Right? Positioning, supports like rolls, wedges, pillows for lying, and sitting you know all the functional positions that should be maintained in, in uh, Paralyzed, right? GBS in all the patients in a positioning goal and SMA positioning. Custom built seats and sleep systems with wheelchairs and strollers. Some work to Western Padanum Rana. Okay. So, ambulation, children with type 1 and A may need to be carried or use the wheelchair. Children with type 3 who are initial walkers may become sitters as they age. These children need continued exercises, orthotics and walking aids. To maintain walking as much as possible. For sitters, the preferred method will be carrying uh, parents during their infancy and baby strollers as they grow up to 3 to Even our children we carry, normal children. Uh, normal children also we carry, so first two years or something, maybe we don't need a uh, wheelchair, but uh, once a child grows older and the mother finds it difficult, then we need definitely need a wheelchair for the children. But above 5 years, the preferred method of ambulation will be pediatric care. Next. So, these are the next focus. Ambulation may be monitored using PIMB or the ambulator grading criteria of Hopper and Bullock. Ambulance children who are independent walkers, whether using walking aid, orthosis or none, may be assigned assessed using the 6 minute walk test. But uh, only those who can walk more than 6 minutes can be assessed by a Six minute walk test. The functional balance of the older child children may be measured using time to get up and go test or could be measured obje objectively using instruments like bal balance platform, weight tracer, post plus if a gait analysis lab is available. Next. So, ambulation in sitters, manual pediatric wheelchairs for those children with minimal grip and adequate power in the elbow flexors. Uh, children should be uh, uh, children should be able to push the Pushrams of the wheelchair, we have, we have seen some children with adequate power in the upper limb, just flexion, like a quad, uh, like a spinal cord injury who is a quadriplegic, even though they do not have grip, you can give cap stance to the uh, hand rims and then the, with the bicep system, they can move around. So, some children may be able to push the wheelchair by, they use friction actually, they may not be even able to grip, but they use friction to push the Handle. But uh, one thing we have to be careful in the floppy hand is the hand should not go in between the spokes. If it goes in between the spokes and it is running, the child can get injured. So always initially, uh, children should preferably be under supervision during the early phases of wheelchair training. Then uh, powered pediatric wheelchairs may be used when the child becomes a sitter and having quadriplegia, and but enough grip to manage the joystick. We cannot give uh, as a, uh, as a uh, if they are up, if they can afford that is fine, you can give power to but if the fund is not available, one cannot give so, the government has a, I uh, will may develop a selection criteria for that. So, the very young, uh, that is the two to three year old children could be carried along or use a baby stroller with traps and maintaining good posture. Baby strollers will be useful for mothers to take the children along. But uh, one problem with our uh, uh, our environment is we do not have ramps everywhere. And in our road, road like a stroller is going to one. You have to carry the stroller and the baby. No, I'm not joking. That's uh, 
That's the real truth. Uh, the ground, uh, even the road, some roads are really good, uh, but some are not. Some footpaths are good, some are not. So, uh, that uh, we have to, that means that we have to do is more important. Uh, wheelchairs, manual are powered to improve mobility for children with SMA. Uh, manual can be propelled by the patient. Uh, push rooms, brakes are needed. I'll always make sure that all wheelchairs have brakes. And the brakes are functioning also. Telephone and nut loose item, they may roll off the thing. Uh, are needed or pushed by caregiver. When it is pushed by a caregiver, it should have handle, brakes, anti tippers, and uh, front casters must be adequately large. About six inch casters. Okay. Manual may be used by those with good upper limb function, powered for those with quadriplegia, uh, joystick, horn, and sip and puff. Okay, Namala, and in Western, uh, you, we have seen sip and puff wheelchair. And those with severe weakness, straps and pads to position the trunk. That is very important. Uh, you know, when you are having scoliosis and the patient is sitting, then you need to have adequate uh, pads also, so that it will support the, and the patient will have a better posture. Uh, then pediatric wheelchairs for children. Folding type should should help in transportation. Uh, powered wheelchair, there is an issue is you have to, if you have to transport long distances, then it's a, you need to have a vehicle. For non-citizens or citizens, wheelchairs should have safety. I think all wheelchairs should have safety straps and headrest with straps and adjustable back support. Next. So, wheelchair modifications and add-ons to the wheelchair are lap trays so that the children can Right, balanced forearm orthosis. This is uh, I have not seen in a balanced forearm or only in pictures. Then headrest, chest, and pelvic straps. Pressure relieving molded custom made cushions that occur. because they have pelvic obliquity. Then you have to uh, give a wedge in the cushion so that they can uh, sit better. Then uh, standing multifunctional wheelchairs are also available. You can see the low. Uh, the picture is actually standing. IIT Madras has developed it, and they are going to have a. Uh, they are uh, no, next week. They are having a workshop on it, I think. But uh, this may be difficult for our S SMA children because they, the hand has to be good. This is mainly for paraplegic spinal injuries. But if the caregiver is there and the caregiver can push, this can also be. Used. Then uh, prerequisites for uh, wheelchair uses, the patient should have adequate cognition to use the wheelchair safely. That is when in the uh, outdoor and all. Then uh, adequate space in the home and household to move around. If you are having very tight corners and the house is uh, having lots of furniture and you cannot push the wheelchair, then wheelchair uh, use may, you can only make the wheel, keep the wheel. So that is also an important aspect. Taken into account, the ramp should be there in the house so that the wheelchair can be uh, taken down. So that is 1 is to 15 to 1 is to 12 gradient, 1 is to 20. Electric, if you are using a powered wheelchair, they should have a electric connection or power supply because, uh, like our mobile phone, power of then you can't use it. So, advances is uh, the robotic arms on side of wheelchair that uh, we see in Google and all. Standing wheelchairs step climbers and self driving wheelchairs. Amrita has done a st study, they have an, done an experiment. They have a uh, uh, lidar, they use lidar technology to uh, get the wheelchair to move around like our Tesla self driving cars. So, well, they are using the same technology to, to have self driving wheelchair, but those, those are in the experimental stage, I think. Okay, ambulation in walkers and standards. Standards may be helped to do therapeutic walking in parallel bars with lightweight orthosis. Uh, the important thing is always lightweight orthosis, not heavy orthosis for SMA. Standards, however, require wheelchairs for mobility over long distances. Walkers with hip weakness may continue to walk with hyperextended uh, hips and lower doses. Uh, they may require a walking aid like a walking stick or elbow crutch uh, to go ambulating for longer distances. For short distance, we can have the elbow crutch wheeling. Outside of Boyka, they still want to walk, then they may require it is better to just support them with a elbow crutch or a 
walking stick. Walkers could come, but the walkers are, if you have to take it and keep it, then they will find it difficult. So you must have uh, a rollator. Like, what is your experience? Maybe, but uh, yeah. But shade to work and it will be difficult. For Parkinson patients also, uh, when you take it, pardon. So that's, that's a practical issue that we have seen. Front wheels all of them. I think it's a four wheel silent corp. I wouldn't go on part of it. Yeah. That, yeah. Tilt it down. Ah, posterior walkers. Posterior walkers, useful. No, but uh, will that be useful for SMA? I don't know. Ah, some SMA. Will be useful. Hello, for SMA, CPC is useful. Yeah. Will be useful. Yeah. For SMA, you have to try it out, I think so, because posterior walkers, they walk with hyper extension. Part of the limb may not be useful, because the upper limb is also weak. Whereas in CP, the upper limb is powerful. So that may be one thing. Okay. Yeah, they are at risk for falls. That is one thing you have to tell them, parents. Those with weak gastronomies will develop calcaneus with valgus deformity and may require static air force. And the walker should be taught to do pacing for improving endurance and reduce fatigue. Rest to Otherwise, pacing, they can walk for longer distance. You place some chair. The child will be able to walk and go to the kitchen and come back. But if the chair is not there out of Chennai, then they will feel fatigue and they can fall. So that is important in the house next. Okay, activities of daily living is a term used to collectively describe fundamental skills required to for independent care of oneself, such as eating, bathing and mobility. The term was first coined by Sidney Katz in 1950. The instrumental ideals are those that require more complex thinking skills, including organizational skills like Transportation, shopping, managing finances, meal preparation, and children are not It may be play, storybook, marchena. All those will require thinking. Also, in SMA, the children are, uh, are relatively having a good uh, IQ, so they may uh, learn all these things. Uh, common ideals difficult for sitters include bathing will need assistance, toileting. Needs assistance as the older child may find it difficult to reach the perimen and even lift a mug. Mug is a way to remember take. So we usually see that they take a cherry glass. That is holding the glass with both hands. Le. Holder or other can also be used. Uh, dressing lower body and later upper body. That lifting arm above shoulder is difficult. So uh, uh, that is also affected, lower body patathila, because they are not able to get up and then put the dress. So that is difficult. Grooming for those uh, sitter with difficulty in lifting, arm above, shoulder. Shoulder na merle pokam patathila, then uh, combing will be done. But they still manage somehow by bringing the head down and then lying down and combing. So if we can train them and uh, empower them, they will do, they can, we can Continue activities of the daily living. Uh, next. Yeah, I'm a bit slow. Uh, so, ADLs may be evaluated with PIM, modified la, uh, Bartel, and uh, pedicat uh, studies have been done. Hand function may be measured using pegboard for, and uh, box and block for scores. Grip strength may be measured using hand dynamometer, but these are all weak grips. So, it, uh, I don't know. Even sometimes hand dynamometer may not also pick up. You need to have a pediatric uh, dynamometer to measure the grip strength. Next, uh, ideal management. Occupational therapists can significantly help improve function by helping teach and train both the child and the parents in ideals, hand function, writing, drawing, and craft skills. Uh, for weak shoulders, both hands can be used for drinking uh, from a glass. For weak shoulder and elbow, balanced forearm orthosis can help with feeding. For perineal killing, OT can train the child to use the health faucet. Uh, for, uh, they can also teach the child on transfer on to bed, wheelchair and toilet. They can train the child on optimal use of lap tray for educational purposes. Lap tray on they can 
actually do. Assistive devices like reachers, cloth hooks may be used for improving uh, dressing. Training with universal cuff can help in better in independence for writing, grooming, feeding and uh, combing. Next. So writing, most sitters and non-sitters usually have adequate function in their hands to continue writing. However, those with significant weakness in their shoulders and elbow require training from occupational therapists. They use a lap tray attached to their uh, wheelchair or uh, special chair for writing. If the hand grip is very weak, universal cuff or grippers for pen, pencil may be used. Touch screen, smartphones, computers can help in continuing education. Uh, uh, yeah, before coming, the rehab theme actually is a theme. So, not everywhere we have all the occupational therapists, uh, physiotherapists, physiatrists. So, when the rehab person is there, uh, we have areas in which where we have to do both. Uh, suppose you need to train, if you are the only the physiotherapist in DIEC and the occupational therapist is not there, then you can train them on uh, and advise them on uh, daily living activities. So that it uh, shares in between. It depends on the uh, ground situation. We do not have ideal rehabilitation team all over in all hospitals. Even in West also it is like that. Okay. So environmental modification, disease and disability are not purely a biomedical problem. The determination and the impact of environmental factors on the level of functioning of the patient and social adaptation is also reflected in the categorical profile of uh, ICF. Sometimes environmental factors play a crucial role in improving a child's level of functioning. So environmental modification commonly use the railings along steps and ramps for the ambulant SMA, uh, grab bars in bathrooms and toilets, light uh, lever arm taps and lever arm handles for the doors, uh, ramp in how home, school, office, playgrounds help sitters on wheelchairs to have better participation in uh, society for walkers. High bed and chairs are easier than low sofa. Low sofa in a the standards and walkers, uh, like in uh, Duchenne muscle, in muscular dystrophies, Gower sign is also, similar to Gower sign is also present in SMA children, that is for the walkers. So, very low so far, so far, power illness, bedroom, chairroom, chitta pokka nai to parana. Maybe you can add a brick under the uh, big uh, bed and then uh, lift it or fix it. That's the solution. Uh, sitters uh, on wheelchair should have chairs or bed and toilet seat at the same level as the wheelchair seat for easier transfer. And uh, electric switches and wash basin should be accessible for the wheelchair user. When you are, if you are designing a new house, then you must uh, tell that you have to, the parent has to be advised on uh, modifying their house so that uh, you have a better wheelchair accessible house. Um, uh, uh, our uh, engineering college architecture department has a battery of a unit, so you can get advice from there. And guidelines is also available on the net, that is the Social Justice for Environment. I have a book on barrier free access. So they are, when they are building a house, then they can get those ideas to implement. Travel, always take the wheelchair along, that is folding lightweight. Carrying breathing equipment is also necessary if they are going long distances. Neck and spinal support should also be taken because long term arm taker, they will need long travel with neck will fatigue, you may not be able to lie the patella ganatilla. So they need to carry the backup supports. Then uh, if using powered wheelchair, make sure the destination also has a charging point because charge poi kanya destination le chenda engine charge hoy kanda you have to carry the wheelchair so that on road wheelchair these are all from west uh, on road wheelchair accessible vehicles four point tie downs that is wheelchair uh, one uh, car van in dagatha fix cheyanalla dana four point tie downs uh, then car beds and breathing equipment for those having respiratory okay, next so the multidisciplinary team uh, this is this team is from uh, Ukraine. Ukraine also has a, a, a SMA support group and uh, uh, good system. Uh, uh, Dr. Lakshmi only found that article and showed uh, 
Uh, incidentally, I was seeing a French TV, France 24, Kanba, you can see, uh, it's in English, but it uh, shows uh, uh, Ukraine war or a new silicon. There was one uh, small uh, program on SMA issues which came on the TV. If, uh, now I am looking, uh, 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 it's making me aware that Anakanda Sadhana. But that time they told about BiPAP issues because the hospital was bombed and they did not have. And this SMA child had to be brought over to Poland or France for continued treatment and they had that issue. It was highlighted by the, I think it was French or German TV, but it was a European TV which actually showed that. And I think two minute program or something. So this, now I realize that this was, this was the team that must have done the rehab for SMA. So they had a pediatric neurologist, genetist, pulmonologist, gastroenterologist, and then orthopedist, physical medicine and rehabilitation specialist, physical therapist, ergotherapist, who does uh, modifications of uh, modification of the house, house ergotherapist, modification of the house and environment, especially. And uh, it is an interdisciplinary approach and formation of a home rehab. They again emphasize on a home rehabilitation program. Next. The message is gentle, slow, graded strengthening exercises, support with appropriate orthosis, positioning to prevent contractures, wheelchair and walking aids as needed. Promoting play and participation is important and regular follow-up. So to conclude, the primary goal of musculoskeletal rehabilitation in child with SMA is to assist the child in maintaining function, independence, improve quality of life for as long as possible and this requires a multidisciplinary team. Next. Thank you. This is uh, more important, poster, getting the post.